A great God in heaven, we thank you very much for our Bible study tonight, once again. We thank you because you help us to study your word systematically from chapter to chapter and verse to verse, so that we do not miss any message you are sending to us. We are praying tonight, once again, that you'll speak to every heart present here tonight in Jesus' name. We pray that those who will be hearing through Kisset or any other means, we're asking, O oh Lord, that your spirit will go with the message and teach us what you want us to understand so that, Lord, you prepare us for eternity. Thank you, Lord. Open our eyes of understanding tonight that we may see and behold wonderful, wondrous things out of your word and let the word profit every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. As we come to our Bible study tonight once again, we are now in the second epistle of Peter. This is a second epistle general of Peter. It's referred to as general because it's not referring to, it's not written to a particular church. That is a particular local church. It's written to churches in a group together in a particular province or particular area. But it's part of the fullness and the entirety of scripture that is given unto us so that we can learn and as we learn we'll be prepared for eternity i'm sure you know already that the bible says that all scripture is given by inspiration and all scripture is profitable for doctrine and for reproof and for correction for instruction in righteousness looking at that verse of scripture whenever you come to study the word of god it's given unto us for doctrine that is the doctrine of the Bible. The doctrine is not based on experience. It's not based on dreams. It's not based on vision. It's not based on whatever you have seen, whatever you have not seen. It's based on the scriptures. And then it says, it's profitable for reproof and for correction. That is, when you come before the word of God, there may be things the word will point out in your life and it will correct you or may point out in the life of your neighbor or Christian friend and it corrects us for reproof, for correction and for instruction in righteousness. How important righteousness is as we study the word of God because it's that righteousness, Christian character that prepares us for life eternal. That is, for life eternal in eternity with God. And then it says that the man of God may be perfect, first of all, the child of God. The way you grow from, uh, from baby stage to adulthood and to maturity is that you hear the word of God. Not only the child of God, the man of God, the preacher, the prophet, and the evangelist, and the one that is serving the Lord. If we're going to be matured and perfect in the work of the Lord, we need to be reading the word of God. Not just that we go out to talk and just share with people that the man of God may be perfect. That means matured. That means complete. That means developed. That means it's going to a level that now is not a baby Christian anymore. It's not an immature fellow anymore. It's only really prepared and furnished unto all good works. That's the reason we come and we study the word of God. I told you last week as we opened to chapter 2 of Second Peter. That the whole chapter is one in the church against false prophets. And actually the nudget or the things you have in the whole chapter is contained in the first verse. Look at it with me once again. Second Peter chapter 2 verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately privilege shall bring in damnable heresies, even deny the Lord that bought them and bring upon themselves swift destruction. There you find that in the Old Testament, that is in the dispensation that is gone, the Old Covenant, there were false prophets among the people. And then it says, it didn't stop in the Old Testament or Old Covenant, it comes on to the New Covenant or the New Testament or the church. There shall be false teachers among you. What will they do? They will bring in damnable heresies. Heresies that damn the soul. False doctrines that damn the soul. And they would even get to the point of denying the Lord that bought them, that purchased them, that redeemed them, 
that saved them, that rescued them in the past from their life of sin. And then it says, they'll bring upon themselves swift destruction, which means then there is judgment coming upon uh, the teachers of false doctrine, or the teachers of damnable heresies, or the teachers that mislead people out of the way of life eternal, and it gets into the way of destruction and perdition. And it says in verse 2, and many shall follow their pernicious ways. That is their way of error, their way of false doctrine, and their way of deceit, and their way that hardens the conscience against the truth of the word of God. It says not just a few, not just some. In a few places, in some isolated places, it says many, many people shall follow their pernicious, destructive ways, their ways of destruction and perdition and eternal punishment. I reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. That is, the people that do not know the difference between true prophets and false prophets, between counterfeits and the genuine, between the children of God, the people of God, and the unbelievers, the people that do not know any difference, they'll be speaking evil of Christianity as a whole, of the Christian standard as a whole, of the church as a whole, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be able spoken of. And then it says, it's through covetousness. They shall with feigned words make merchandise of you. That is through their covetousness because they're looking for money. Maybe they've tried to make it in education. They cannot. They try to make it in trade. They cannot. They try to make it in another profession. They cannot. And they think the easiest way to get money so that they can make a living is to be so raise up what they call a church, an assembly, a fellowship, a new ministry. And in these new ministries, they'll be teaching error because they're not interested in the truth. All they're interested in is money. And because they want money and they want to bring a lot of people, multitudes of people, is to deceive them and to tell them everything is easy. There is no narrow way. There is no self-denial. There is no repentance. And there is no, uh, there is no restitution. Everything is easy. Just raise up your hand. You believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can keep on with your smoking and drinking. You can keep on with adultery and fornication. You can keep on with all your bad character. It doesn't matter at all. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the end of it. They want to gather crouch. And they, 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 they're sugar-coated people. They can talk a lot. And they deceive a lot of people. And it says it's through that covetousness. They'll make merchandise of you. But then he tells us something in the latter part of verse 3. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. You see what the Lord is telling us? He's saying that there's certainty of eternal punishment for false prophets and false teachers. You need to understand this, that the office of the prophet or the preacher is a sacred office. It carries great responsibility. And if we do it well, it carries great rewards. The true prophet bears the message of God to the never-dying souls, the souls that exist eternally forever. If the prophet or the preacher delivers a divine message faithfully to God's creatures, to these precious souls, they are saved. And they are delivered from eternal destruction, eternal suffering, eternal ruin. If the message, however is altered the message of being born again if it's altered the message of holiness without which no man shall see the lord if it is altered the message of righteousness to exceed the righteousness of the scribes and pharisees otherwise you'll not be able to get to the kingdom of god if that message is altered the message of loving god with all your heart all your soul all your mind and loving your neighbor as yourself and loving the believer as christ loved us if that message is altered the message that there is a possibility of backsliding that when iniquities abound that the love of many shall wax cold and many people that were following the lord before they're going to backslide and go away from the Lord if that message is altered. If the message of the importance, the, the indispensability of the new birth, being born again, if that message is altered and we put healing above salvation, deliverance above salvation, and prosperity above salvation, and material blessings above salvation, if the message of the importance of the new birth if that message is altered or if it is modified or if it is watered down the message will not be serving god's interest anymore that message will be powerless and weak and important to save or to rescue any soul while the true prophet preaches god's message and it serves god's interest 
A false prophet, on the other hand, he walks against God. The pity is that false prophet uses God's book, the Bible. You see God's name and you see the resources of God's people and those ignorant people, they keep on supporting those false prophets to damn their own soul. It's like when somebody is trying to give you poison and you're giving him the money to buy the poison. It's like when somebody wants to go to the court, he wants to go and condemn you so that you can have life imprisonment and you're paying him the salary. To be able to damn you and to be able to get you to life imprisonment. It is like when somebody is looking for the people that will destroy you and kill you and you give him the transport money to help him to go and look for the people that will come and destroy you. All those uh, misguided, misled souls who are supporting false prophets, they are paying the false prophets to deceive them and to damn their souls. That's why the damnation and the judgment of the false prophets will be very intense and be very serious on the final day. Those poor false prophets who are using God's name and are using God's book and you see god's provision to lead the people of god away away from god and unto satan god's arch enemy and you understand from the description i've given you that uh, that's the reason why god has to judge the false prophets it has to be expected in the normal things normal line of things the false prophets who misrepresent god and mislead precious never dying souls will be condemned and they'll be judged severely even the silent people the silent preachers who say nothing they know the truth they say nothing they know the word of life they say nothing they know that preachers false preachers are deceiving people they say nothing they know that many people are following sheepishly ignorantly the people that are leading them to hell fire they say nothing they know that this is false doctrine and they know that these people are leading others astray. They keep quiet. They seal their mouths. They say nothing. Those silent preachers are going to be judged severely by the almighty God himself. Uh, look at the word of God. In Luke, Luke chapter 12, in verse 47, Luke chapter 12, verse 47 yeah, he tells us very pointedly and very clearly. And that servant, which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, shall be beaten with many stripes. I'm sure you know Ezekiel chapter 3. Open to Ezekiel chapter 3. And see what the Lord is saying to those. And they know the truth, but they keep quiet. They know false doctrine is deceiving their neighbor. They keep quiet. They know that false teaching and false prophets are taking people away from the truth. They keep quiet. In Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 17. Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, thou shalt surely die. And thou givest him not warning. You are quiet, you are silent, you seal your mouth. Thou givest him not warning, no speakers to warn the wicked from the wicked way, from his wicked way, to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 6. Ezekiel 33, verse 6. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be, be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at your hand. You're a Christian and you see a fellow Christian being led astray, you keep quiet. House fellowship leader, you see members of the house fellowship being led astray, you keep quiet. A sonar leader, a coordinator, a preacher, you see people under your supervision, they are being led astray, you keep quiet. They are trying to be nice, nice to the enemies of our souls, nice to the people that damn souls in hellfire. You are trying to be nice. That attitude of trying to be nice to messengers of Satan will damn your own soul in hellfire as well. In Ezekiel chapter 34, I'm reading verses 2 and 3. It says, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord 
God unto the shepherds would be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flock? Ye eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are, that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. Just negligent, just quiet. I will not do what he ought to do. Jeremiah chapter 23. In Jeremiah chapter 23, uh, the Bible emphasizes this over and over. And it's here in verse 2. It says, Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, against the pastors, the preachers, the prophets uh, that feed my people. Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away, and have not visited them. Behold, I will visit upon you the evil of your doing, says the Lord. And when you don't do your duty, you're negligent, you're quiet, you seal your mouth. You know the truth, but you'll not bring the truth out. Then you face the judgment of God. In Jeremiah chapter 48, I'm reading to you from verse 10. Jeremiah. Chapter 48, verse 10, calls said, Be he that doeth the work of God deceitfully. And you know these people that are methodical, philosophical, and they try, to, they try to cover the truth with nice, nice words, and the people don't understand the direction they ought to go or what they ought to believe. It says, Cursed be he that doeth the work of God deceitfully. And cursed be he that keepeth back the sword from the blood. What it means there, the sword of the spirit. You don't want it to touch the quick and the heart and, the, and the, to really pinch the people for them to get the point. It says those people that do the work of God that way, they are cursed. In Judges chapter 5, I'm reading to you from verse 23. Judges chapter 5, verse 23. It says, Cursed ye mirrors said the angel of the lord because he bitterly the inhabitants thereof because they came not to the help of the lord to the help of the lord against the mighty these mighty preachers wealthy preachers forceful preachers convincing preachers but they convince the people in the way of error and then you don't do anything about it it says the angel of the lord and the lord himself will curse such an individual that is negligent what we find in the bible is that faithful prophets or preachers always spoke clearly in warning god's people of false prophets they did and we ought to do that same thing today as you go from uh, the old testament to the new testament you'll discover the people of god they want Others concerning false prophets in Jeremiah chapter 28. I'm reading verse 15. Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 15. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Ananiah, the prophet, hear now, Ananiah, the Lord has not sent thee, but thou makest these people to trust in a lie. How many people can do that today? I'm face eyeball to eyeball the false prophets and tell them. You're deceiving these people the lord has not given you this message like this you are working for pay you are working for money but many people want to be in the good books or the false prophets in matthew chapter 16 here's the lord jesus christ himself and let's see how pointed he was how clear he was matthew chapter 16 i'm reading verse 6 and verse 12 then jesus said unto them take heed and beware of the leaven of the pharisees and of the sadducees when they didn't understand then he made it very clear in verse 12 then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread but of the doctrine of pharisees and of the sadducees the pharisees and the sadducees were denominations religious denominations at that time and whenever you mention them everybody will know who you are talking about and jesus did not put his tongue under his cheek uh, to cover it up and to say it in a way that people will not understand it was clear it was plain it was open it was frank it was pointed and that's the way you ought to do it today so that the people that are hearing will not have any doubt what you are talking about in luke chapter 11 Luke chapter 11 verse 52 Luke 11 verse 52 here is the Lord Jesus Christ again woe unto you lawyers for ye have taken away the key of knowledge ye enter, entered not in yourselves and them that were entering in ye hindered 
that's the reason he brought judgment upon them even the people that were seeking for the kingdom of god and they wanted to enter into the kingdom of god they hindered them they themselves will not enter but they will not allow others to enter that's why jesus said they were caused and there was judgment upon them and he said woe unto you in first timothy chapter one first timothy chapter one verses 19 and 20 holding faith and a good conscience and which some have, having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck now he mentions two of them of whom is Ammonius and alexander whom i have delivered unto satan that they may learn not to blaspheme <laughs> do you see this i think you know we're getting to the point where we do not cherish sound doctrine the way we ought to cherish sound doctrine if the preacher if the pastor if let me let me be direct if i stood up here and then i mention an alexander that you know i mention an uh, harmonious that you know in my preaching oh you'll be saying oh the pastor needs to use more wisdom in preaching he ought to understand we understand what he's trying to pass across but he ought to use some wisdom and put it in a nice way so that nobody will think that it's because he hates so and so that's why he's talking like that and if i go beyond mentioning the name alexander i go beyond mentioning Amanios, and i say i've delivered him unto satan that he may not that he may learn not to blaspheme i just say he's finished everything finished everything do you see did you hear the way he talked is there love in that is there wisdom in that this is the wisdom of god this is the word of god wisdom is not compromise wisdom is not fearing to declare the truth wisdom is the fear of god the fear of god is the beginning of wisdom and when you fear god and you're delivering souls the false prophets are putting into captivity that is wisdom so don't just go into a corner and be praying for the pastor give the pastor wisdom give the pastor wisdom so that he will not be talking the way he's talking we need to talk like that because many have been deceived and you'll see here that these people of god they were very very clear in warning the people of god so that the false prophets will not catch them and lead them astray in second timothy chapter 2 verses 17 and 18 and their word will eat as does a canker of whom is Ammonius and Philetus, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. And then in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 14 and 15, Alexander the Corpus Mis did me much evil. The Lord reward him according to his words, of whom be thou aware. Timothy, beware of that man. That man, he, because he greatly withstood our words. We preach the truth, and he will not allow the people to hear the truth and believe the truth and follow the truth. Therefore, beware of that man. You see that in the scriptures, the people of God were warned concerning the people, the prophets, the teachers, the evangelists that were leading them astray as we look at the study today it's on your outline we divide into three parts number one the damnation of unfaithful servants the damnation of unfaithful servants number two the doom of unrighteous sinners the doom of unrighteous sinners and number three the destruction of ungodly sodomites number one let's come back to number one the damnation of unfaithful servants we we'll read verses three and four the second peter chapter two verse three the second part whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not and their damnations lumbereth not it tells us here of the certainty of the damnation the judgment the condemnation that will come upon the false prophets for false prophets and false teachers that is the teachers of false doctrines who bring in damnable heresies their judgments lumbereth not their judgment lingereth not their damnations lumbereth not that means incorrigible false prophets are being pursued by the sweet furry judgment of god each day draws them nearer and nearer to the end of the opportunity to repent and draws them to the beginning of eternal suffering with satan and his angels in hell fire you need to understand that the position of the prophet or the preacher is high just like the position of the angels of god in heaven is high yet the high position of the fallen angels did not hinder the severe judgment of god coming upon them look at it in verse 4 it says for if 
God. Uh, talking now about the false prophets and talking about uh, talking about a similarity. The false prophets and then the fallen angels. It says, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. What he's saying here is that as high as those angels were, when they fell and they rebelled against the Lord, and they influenced some other angels too to fall with them and to contradict God and disobey God with them. The Lord cast them away from heaven. And now they are reserved unto the judgment that is eternal. It says they are reserved into this judgment. They are cast into hell and delivered into chains of darkness. Reserved unto judgment. Eternal everlasting judgment. Even though their position was high. Yet when they rebelled against the Lord Almighty, judgment came upon them. How much so when somebody had known the Lord and the Lord favored him and made him a preacher, a prophet, an evangelist, a pastor, or whatever, having that high position, having the praise of men and some honor and some wealth, if he falls away from the truth and now becomes a false prophet or a teacher of damnable heresies, his position will not hinder the judgment of God, will not prevent the eternal punishment from coming upon him. Because if God spared not on those angels that sinned, but he cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment, how can he spare the false prophets who lead multitudes of souls astray to eternal damnation? Those who fall or depart from the faith, and thereafter tempt and teach others to depart from the faith. Follow the footsteps of Satan and the footsteps of those fallen angels. They fell and they influenced others to fall. Being partners in crime, they will be partners, eternal partners in damnation and hell. And that's the testimony of the whole Bible. If you look at Jude, reading from verse 4. Jude, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares. Who was before fold ordained unto this condemnation? Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, Afterward, destroyed them that believed not, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but let their own habitation, as he reserved in everlasting chains, under darkness unto judgment of the great day. That tells us then that a God is no respecter of persons, is no respecter of a high position, is no respecter of our wealth, is no respecter of whatever popularity we have. If we go into false doctrine, it's not going to favor us because of who we are, because of what we did in the past, because of how high we were in the past. If you go to false doctrine and you mislead other people in that false doctrine and you get them away from their steadfastness and living a holy and righteous life and staying in the narrow way that leads to heaven, the judgment of God will be upon you. We're told in uh, Matthew chapter 25, verse 41. Matthew chapter 25. I'm reading to you from verse 41. We'll see where those, uh, where the devil and his angels will be. And where the devil and his angels will be, those who are partners with the devil and partners with the fallen angels, and they're deceiving other people, influencing other people to go into the way of error, that's the same place they'll be in eternity as well. It says in verse 41, Matthew chapter 25, Then shall you say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. Prepare for the devil and his angels originally hellfire was not prepared for men and women was not prepared for us but then all those who go on the side of satan and the partner and the fellowship with satan and they accept the lives of satan and they market they publicize and they preach and they spread the lies of Satan. And they go against God, against the doctrines of the word of God. And they come on the side of the devil. They don't spend eternity with the devil and his angels. Depart from me. He comes into everlasting fire. Prepared for the devil and his angels. I told you that you see this in both Old Testament and, and New Testament. That God will bring judgment upon the false prophets. Those who mislead ignorant people, innocent people into the the ways of error in Jeremiah chapter 14. Reading from verse 14. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 14. 
Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. Think about it today. Think about it today. If you have been converted 20, 30 years ago, you'll be surprised what is happening today. How the people are coming to you. Uh, now, nowadays, if you've married for two or three years and there is no child yet, and they have been with us before, and they knew the truth before, and he knew the word of God before and we rejoice together in the authority of the name of Jesus in the power of the almighty God in the fulfillment of the promises of God before but now they've gone astray they'll come back to you and say hey, sit down there and be reading Bible and you don't know that you need deliverance because you've not got a child and when you go to the hospital they will tell you maybe the man has low count maybe the woman has fibroid that needs to be dealt with they don't think about those physical biological scientific things everything deliverance everything deliverance uh, we know we know the country in which we are uh, if you've graduated for some years now and there is no work or they come to you they say sit down there you don't know that what you need is deliverance and if there is anything that happens, something accidental that happens somewhere, uh, they say sit down there. You don't know that what you need is deliverance. If you have business with another person and the other fellow, because of his own sinful uh, state and because of his own backsliding, he cheats you. They come to you, they say, and sit down there. You don't know that what you need is deliverance. And if you have, uh, maybe you, you ate too late and you ate heavy. And because of eating heavy late, then you have a bad dream. You wake up in the morning, and if you happen to tell any of them, you know, the kind of dream you are. And that's what we're telling you. What you need is deliverance. This deliverance, deliverance we're talking about, where is it in the New Testament? Well, the apostles that came to the Lord Jesus Christ, what separate deliverance did he do for them? Well, the disciples that believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, what separate deliverance did he do for them? With all these people that got converted on the day of Pentecost, 3,000 one single day. What kind of deliverance did he do for them? Ah, you see, those people is because their parents were good, good people. Their parents were religious people. They didn't go into idolatry. Don't tell me that. In the Psalms, it says that those Israelites, they made their children to pass through fire. And they made their children uh, to serve Molech and all the idols of the pagans. The same thing could have come upon them too. There was no separate deliverance if any man is in Christ, it's a new creature. All things are passed away, all things have become new. When I got born again, I got born again. Before I got born again, my father had done all these things they normally do on their children in African countries and mark with blade and do this and that and put charcoal in each. All that is nonsense, it has no meaning. And then I've gone to Children and Seraphim Church, I was their drummer for them. And I was dreaming for people, interpreting their dreams for them, deceiving them. When we saw nothing, we said, tell me your dream. And then uh, we put our hands down, we shake a little, and it's all, it's all lie. I deceived them. And they'll come every time they dreamed. But when I got born again, I didn't go for any deliverance somewhere. I became free. Because you shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. You bring yourself into bondage. And because of this, and because of this, and because of this, thank the Lord, I am free. I said, thank God, I am free. <laughs> All those of you that they are deceiving, they come here, they come there, they come there, and they're deceiving you. You know the truth, and you stand on the truth, and you do not allow these people to be coming and deceiving you. When they come to deceive you like that, they speak the lies of their own heart. Look at verse 14 again. Then the Lord said unto me, the prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not. Neither have I commanded them, neither speak unto them. They profess unto you a false vision and divination, and a thing of naught, and a deceit of their heart. In verse 15, therefore, thus says the Lord, concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name, I sent them not, yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in, the land, in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed, and the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. They shall have none to bury them, them, their wives, their sons, and their daughters, for I will pour my I will pour their wickedness upon them. Do you see here the judgment that came upon them? Because they will not stand in the watch of God. I'm reading to you Jeremiah chapter 28. Jeremiah chapter 28. You know, some of these false prophets are very, very bold, very aggressive. God sent Jeremiah. And he was teaching the people the word of God. And then this other fellow came 
And he said, no, it's not like that. Very, very bold. And he took the yoke out of the neck, the demonstration that Jeremiah was making for them. Took it away. And they told the people, don't mind Jeremiah. There's nothing like that. Maybe you are bold like that. And you are thinking because you are bold for false doctrine. That you have the power of God. That you have the spirit of God. The sinner can be bold. Those who are following Satan can be bold. Those who are preaching false doctrine can be bold. That you are bold in opposing us who are teaching the way of salvation and the way of holiness doesn't mean you have the spirit of God. You can be bold and energized by the devil. In Jeremiah chapter 28, I'm reading to you from verse 1. And it came to pass that same year. In the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year and in the fifth month, that Ananiah, the son of Azor, the prophet, which was of Gibeon, spake unto me, that's unto Jeremiah, in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years, Jeremiah had prophesied that the captivity would be for 70 years. But this false prophet came and said, Within two full years, I will bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. And I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, the king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah that went into Babylon and says, uh, says the Lord, For I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jemah said unto the prophet and I in the presence of the priest, and in the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord. Even the prophet Jemima said, Amen. The Lord do so, if that is the word. If that is what the Lord has said, only two years, that's what I want to. I also don't want trouble for the people. The Lord perform thy words, which thou hast prophesied to bring again the vessels of the Lord's house, and all that is carried away captive from Babylon into this place. Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in thine ears, and in the ears of all the people, the prophets that have been before me, and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries, and against great kingdoms of war, and of evil, and of pestilence, the prophet which prophesied of peace, when when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord had truly sent him. Then Ananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and break it. Ananias spake in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord, Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all the nations within the space of two full years. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the prophet, after that Ananiah the prophet had broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, go and tell Ananiah, saying, thus says the Lord, thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but thou hast made for them yokes of iron. You see, the people that are deceiving us, the false prophets that are going around, they don't make our problems easier. They don't make, they don't break the real yokes, they increase the yoke, they increase the body. In verse 14, for thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon, and they shall serve him, and I have given him the beasts of the field also. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Ananiah the prophet, Here now Ananiah does say, The Lord has not sent thee, but thou makest these people to trust in a lie. Therefore, thus says the Lord, Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. So Ananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. And you ask yourself, where did that man go? Where is he spending eternity? He spent eternity in hell because he taught rebellion against the Lord, and he refused to repent in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7, I'm reading to you from verse 15 all through to verse 23. In Matthew chapter 7 from verse 15, it says, Beware of false prophets, which come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravening wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. 
A good prophet, a true prophet, a prophet that is saint of God, cannot bring forth false doctrine. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Neither can a false prophet speak any good thing. Every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by their fruit ye shall know them. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name we have cast out devils. And in thy name we have done many wonderful works. Uh, those wonderful works, they tell us over the radio, they prayed and this happened. They told somebody to drink water. When they drank the water, everything inside them went out. They told somebody to touch their clothes. When that person touched their clothes, all the problems vanished, the yoke was broken. That's what we are running after today. In thy name have we done many wonderful works. Then when I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That's what Jesus said. That's the, that's the reason we are making noise and emphasizing it, telling ourselves, let us stand on the word of God. The word of God cannot be broken. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. If there is anything to emphasize today, when we know that the coming of the Lord is drawing near, it is this holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. Any other thing we are running after will lead us into perdition and eternal judgment. Let's come back, let's come back to Second Peter. I'm now in point two the doom of unrighteous sinners uh, understand that uh, the apostle is making use of all these illustrations and examples and is helping us to understand that the false prophets and many that follow their pernicious ways will come into everlasting eternal judgment he tells us in verse 5 and he spared not the old world but saved Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. All the testimonies of scriptures tell us that what happened in the time of Noah was a real fact, an historical thing. It was not fiction. It was not just something that was written by a writer that just wanted to write. It actually happened. And actually, Jesus Christ himself tells us, because he tells us in Matthew chapter 24, that it was a real story, and that what will happen when the coming of the Lord is drawing near will be very similar to what happened at the time of Noah. In Matthew chapter 24, I'm reading to you from verse 36. But of that day and hour, knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not, until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Then shall two be in the field, and one shall be taken, the other shall be left. And two women shall be grinding at the meal, one shall be taken, and the other shall be left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord does come. But know this, that if a good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered, permitted, allowed his house to be broken up. Therefore, be ye also ready. How can you be ready without salvation? How can you be ready when you backslide and you don't return? How can you be ready without being pure in heart? How can you be ready if your hearts are not clean? How can you be ready if your restitution is not done? Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself even as he is pure. Those who are waiting for the coming of the Lord, the only way you can show you want to be ready is to examine your life. And every form of carelessness in your life, every form of private sin, secret sin in your life, you take everything away so that the Lord will look at you and know that you are getting ready. You are not like the foolish virgins. They had some oil in their, in their lamb. But then their light went out. And they all slumbered and slept. And then the cry came, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. And they woke up and they discovered that their oil was gone. Do you see how the grace of God in your life? To resist temptation. To deny yourself. And to be able to live according to the word of God. When they discovered that the oil was gone, they told the wise virgins, Give us of your oil because our, lives, our lamps are going out. They said, We cannot do that. Lest we don't have sufficient for you and for us. You know where they sell. You should have done that before this time. You should pray at the end of the Bible study. We don't know when the Lord will come. You should have made your restitution before this time. 
You should have gotten the oil, the grace before this time. You should have done everything the Lord wanted you to do to get ready before this time. While they went to buy, the bridegroom came. The door was shut. They came knocking later. They said, open to us, open to us. Who are you? I never knew you depart from me. And you know, on the last day, there have been many, many people that will lose out like that. That's why it says, therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour, as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. Now he, he applies it to faithful and unfaithful servants. In verse, in verse 45, who then is a faithful and wise servant? Whom his Lord has made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But an Abe, that evil servant, shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, behave anyhow, hurt fellow workers, hurt fellow servants, as those who are on the way of truth, and begin to eat and to drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, and there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And you'll see how clear the word of God is in Job chapter 22. Job chapter 22, verse 15. As thou march the old way which wicked men are trodden, which were cut down out of time, whose foundation was overflown with a, with a flood, which said unto God, Depart from us. What can the Almighty do for them? That is, those people that said, No, we don't want the commandments of God. We don't want the way of God. They need to add something to the word of God, subtract something from the word of God. It says there will be judgment upon them. In Ezekiel chapter 7. Ezekiel chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 4 as well as from verse 9. Ezekiel chapter 7 from verse 4. And mine eyes shall not spare thee. Neither will I have pity, but I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abomination shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. In verse 9, and mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. And you will see then that God is a God of judgment. And the apostle here is still trying to give us proof that the judgment upon false prophets and upon unrighteous sinners, that judgment is in a vision table it will definitely fall upon the false prophets upon the false teachers and upon all unrighteous people from the very first verse he has been writing about the false prophets among god's people He's been writing about the false teachers teaching heresies that damn the soul, that they will rise up in the church. And he's been talking about backsliding preachers that deny the Lord, that purchased them, that redeemed them, that saved them, that bought them before. And he also said that many will follow their pernicious ways. Now, the Spirit of God, through the apostle, is assuring us of the certainty of God's judgment upon all such people. The proof of God's inescapable judgment comes from the past judgment of, of angels and men. That means past judgment in heaven and past judgment on earth. Past judgment on the whole world as well as on cities as well as on individuals by flood and by fire. It's telling us that he punished the guilty and he judged the sinners in the time of Noah. And that the, the, passage, <coughs> excuse me, the passage of time and the persistent wickedness of man has not changed God into an indulgent, accommodating, uh, powerless God. Uh, you, know, you know what happens in the world. If, if, some, if some people are doing evil and the police force and uh, the authorities are very, very serious about it and they run after them, if those people persist in doing that evil, eventually the authorities will slow down. They will be weakened. They will not be able to do anything anymore. And the police people that uh, have been running after those people, they will be looking at them like this, uh, you know, because uh, the passage of time generally weakens people. And the persistence that people are doing evil and doing evil and doing evil, and they keep on doing persistently, it normally weakens authorities. Therefore, the authorities will just be looking at them. The policemen will just be looking at them and say, well, all these years, I mean, after these people, they will, it has become a pattern. Therefore, they leave them alone, not God not God. The passage of time between the time of Noah 
and this time that the apostle was speaking and the persistence of the people in unrighteousness in sinful behavior and in disobedience and rebellion against the laws of god did not change god he says i am god i change not he was against sin and against error thousands of years ago and until this time is still against sin it's still against false doctrine therefore all the persistence in evil of the children of men will not make god indulgent accommodating and powerless it brought in the flood upon the world of the ungodly and only few people were saved at that time multitudes of ungodly people perished sin cannot be excused sin will not be overlooked by god just because the majority of people around us are practicing it the great number of many false prophets that are that appear today and the false teachers teaching damnable heresies today will not stop god from punishing the guilty and the ungodly did you hear what jesus said let me read it to you again matthew chapter 7 that the false prophets are many will not justify the false doctrine will not mean that god will not will not look at it anymore will just say well there are many let me let me soften let me slow down let me just accommodate them matthew chapter 7 verse 22 many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in thy name full-time prophecy and in thy name i've cast out devils full-time deliverance ministry and in thy name i've done many wonderful works full-time miracle walking ministers then when I profess unto them, I never knew you, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. And that's the reason we are reminding ourselves that the way of salvation is very important and that there is the doom of unrighteous sinners. In Jude verses 15 and 16, Jude verses 15 and 16, to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them, of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him these are murmurers do you murmur these are complainers do you complain walking after their own lust are you walking after your own desires and you will not bring those sins under control and be and let it be cleansed by the blood of the lamb they are most speaker great swelling words having men's person in admiration because of advantage because of gain and it says the judgment of god will come upon them that's why the lord is saying the word of salvation has come to us if we neglect that word of salvation what hope do we have of escaping the judgment of god hebrews chapter 2 from verse 1 therefore we are to give the more honest heed to the things which we have heard lest at any time we should let them sleep for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation which at the first began to be spoken by the lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him hebrews chapter 10 verse 26 for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth after we have received the knowledge of the truth after we know the truth we know the verses we know the chapters we've heard it many times we've spoken to other people we've witnessed to other people we've read it in our quiet time we've heard it in the services if after that we're seen willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries he that despised moses law died without mercy under two or three witnesses of how much sorrow punishment suppose he shall he be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the son of god and has counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified he was sanctified he was saved he was sanctified by the blood of the everlasting covenant he had been saved he had been sanctified now he counts that blood because he's gone to false doctrine because he's now denying the lord he now counts that blood an unholy thing and he has done despite unto the spirit of grace for we know him that has said 
vengeance belongeth to me i will recompense says the lord and again the lord shall judge his people it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living god how can we know all this and refuse to warn you how can we know all this and refuse to speak out first peter chapter 4 in first peter chapter 4 verse 17 for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of god and if it first begin at us what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of god and if the righteous castly be saved even the people that are righteous if they just narrowly escape the people that have repented the people that have done restitution the people that are maintaining by the grace of god clean conscience clear conscience the people that are examining themselves day by day and they are being washed in the blood of the lamp every time the people that refuse to join the, the things of the world if they narrowly escape the judgment of god if the righteous castly be saved where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear the one that is careless the one that doesn't pray about righteousness about holiness about resisting temptation about living a righteous life where will they appear the one that is careless and the one that is just living his life anyhow from day to day where will he appear that's the reason we're warning ourselves that's the reason we're reminding ourselves that the lord can come at any time prepare to meet the lord your god revelation chapter 20 from verse 11 revelation chapter 20 from verse 11 and i saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no place for them and i saw the dead small and great stand before god and the books were open and another book was open which is a book of life and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works and the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to their works and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire this is the death of death this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire when somebody backslides and goes back to sin and he starts being servant of God, child of God, and he becomes a willing servant of Satan. And he gives his heart, and he gives his mind, and he gives his loyalty to Satan. And he gives his love, and his desire, and his pleasure to the world. His name comes out of the book of life. The Lord said, them that sin against me, I will take out of my book. And when somebody takes away from the word of God and suppresses from the doctrines of the word of God, because that thing is too hard. People cannot do that. If we preach that, people will not come. For I testify unto you that if any man will take away anything out of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his path out of the book of life. Now, when the day of judgment comes, all those false prophets that have taken things away from the word of God, and God has taken away their names out of the book of life. Or the, the people that have gone into the world, they've given their heart, their loyalty, their devotion, their commitment to the devil. And they've given their interest and love to the world. And their names out of the book of life. When the day of judgment comes. And their, book, and their name is not found written in the book of life. They are cast into the lake of fire. And that's the reason you want to check up and find out. Is your name written there? Is your name written there? In the book of life. In God's holy book is your name written there. I come to point number three. The destruction of ungodly sodomites. We're reading in 2 Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2. I'm reading verse 6. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an example unto those that should after that should live, that after should live ungodly. That is, what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? It was not uh, just a peculiar thing for them. It will happen to all people that live in the same way, like Sodom and Gomorrah. And you need to understand also, as I told you about the flood at the time of Noah, that this was a true story because Jesus Christ himself referred to it as well. In Luke chapter 17, Luke chapter 17, verse 28, Likewise also, as it was in the days of Lord, they did eat. They drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built the time of Lot. 
But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all. Even thus, here is Jesus telling us what judgment will come on the final day. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. In that day, he which shall be on the, upon the house top, and is top in the house, let him not come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return. Then he said, remember Lord's wife. Oh, there are people that say there's eternal security. Once you've come out of the world, you are born again, you are saved, you are forever saved. And there are people who say they don't believe eternal security, but they act as if they believe eternal security. They backslide and they don't pray immediately. They sin, they don't pray immediately. They do evil, they don't repent immediately. They look back into the world and they don't pray immediately to get back to the Lord. And Jesus Christ said, remember Lord's wife. That had it happened at that time, it will happen again. Deuteronomy chapter 29. Reading from verse 19. Deuteronomy chapter 29. Reading from verse 19. And it come to pass, when he heareth this, the word of this cause, that he bless himself in his heart, saying, I shall have peace, though I walk in the imagination of mine heart, and add drunkenness to thirst. That is, there are people, when they hear the word of God, the warnings of the Bible, or they will not take it to heart, they will say, that's for them. And they will bless themselves, saying, no matter what they say, I know myself, I will have peace. Even if I'm walking in the imagination of my heart, and I'm adding drunkenness to thirst, the Lord will not spare him. But then the anger of the Lord and his jealousy shall smoke against that man. And all the curses that are written in this book shall lie upon him. The Lord shall blot out his name from under heaven. The Lord shall separate him unto evil out of all the tribes of Israel. According to all the curses of the covenant that are written in this book of the Lord. So that the generation to come of your children shall, that shall rise after you. And a stranger shall come from a, far, from a far land. Shall say when they see the plagues of that land and the sicknesses which the Lord has laid upon it. Then it says and that whole land thereof is brimstone and salt and burning that is not sown nor buried nor any grass growth therein like the overthrow of sodom and gomorrah that is as god did to sodom and gomorrah he will do to them which the lord overthrew in his anger in his wrath even all nations shall say wherefore as the lord done thus unto this land what meaneth the heat of this great anger then the men shall say, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers. They knew the Lord before. They were in covenant relationship with the Lord before. But because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord God of their fathers, which he made with them when he brought them forth out of the land of Egypt. Now you see when we talk about this, you might say, well, that's in the olden days. Uh, because at that time, maybe God had a reason for doing what he did. Now God is softer. God is more gentle. God is more loving. That's not what Jesus told us. And Jesus, is, he knew the Father. And he told us about the Father. And he told us about what will happen to the people that do not stand for the gospel, that do not believe the gospel. Uh, come to New Testament and look at Matthew chapter 11. Matthew chapter 11. And see what the Lord is saying. That those who know the truth, those who have had the gospel and yet will not follow after that gospel, it will be more serious for them than for Sodom and Gomorrah. In chapter 11 of uh, Matthew, reading there from verse 20, it says, Then he began to upbraid, he began to rebuke the cities wherein most of his mighty works were done, because they repented not. Woe unto you, Chorazin, woe unto you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have re repented long ago in sackcloth and ashes. But I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for, si eh, for Tyre and Sidon at the day of judgment than for you. And thou, Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you, here is Jesus Christ, the Son of God, a loving Savior and Lord, teaching about judgment. And he didn't say that it will be easier for people because now the passage of years, because God is more loving now, and because God has known that man will never change, he has softened. He didn't say that. 
What did he say? He said, I say unto you in verse 24 that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. And he said that again. Look at Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10, reading from verse 12. And when you come into an house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it be not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whosoever shall not receive you, nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily I say unto you, it shall be more terrible for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. So then the Lord is telling us that God is not weak and God has not changed. And the standard of God remains the same. He still brings judgment today in Jude verse 7. Jude verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities about, and the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. What does that mean? When it says going after strange flesh. You see those uh, people, uh, that's where the word Sodomites came out. Sodom, Sodomites. Going after strange flesh. Men, commit immorality with men. Women, commit immorality with women. Lesbianism, homosexualism. Sodomites. That's where it came from. And you'll find that even the Bible talks about them. Uh, I'll, I'll come back to Jude. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 23. Deuteronomy chapter 23. I'm reading to you from verse 17. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. There shall be no all of the daughters of Israel, nor a Sodomite of the sons of Israel. A Sodomite. A man having immorality with a man. Sodomite. There shall not be found among them. In 1 Kings chapter 14. 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 24. 1 Kings chapter 14, verse 24. And there were also Sodomites in the land. You see that word? And that is, uh, the word came to mean those who go after strange flesh. A lady committing multi with another lady. A man committing multi with another man. And it's terrible. I was in a meeting teaching on leadership. Just two months ago. And then they raised a prayer request. And the prayer request was, please, I want you to pray for me. There's a problem in my family, the fellow said. Because my daughter is trying to get to another lady and is trying to say that I, as the minister, this is a pastor in a church, said, I, as a minister, should wed them, lady to lady. And I said, no, I cannot do it because that's lesbianism. It's against the word of God. The trouble I'm receiving is that my wife, the mother, is saying, you must do it for my daughter. This is what she wants. And this, you must not, you must not oppress my daughter. It's so bad like that today. In Africa here, and of course overseas, there are places where they're even ordaining homosexuals to be preachers and to be writers, authors of Christian books. That, that's why the Lord is telling us we need to stand upon the word of God and remain upon the truth of God because things are going to become worse and worse. And back in Jude verse 7. In Jude verse 7, it says they are going after strength flesh and are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. The vengeance of eternal fire. It says in Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1 from verse 18. For the wrath of God. Is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and righteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. All men who hold the truth of the word of God in unrighteousness. The judgment of God, the indignation of God, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven concerning them. It tells us from verse 24, it says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. For even their women did change natural use into that which is against nature. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, bond in their lust, one toward another, man to man. Men with men walking that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves, as the HIV and the, and the AIDS, that, that recompense of their error which was meet. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with unrighteousness, fornication, 
wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents without natural affection, truth breakers without uh, implacable and unmerciful who knowing the judgment of god look at this they know the judgment of god that they which commit such things are worthy of death not only do the same but they have pleasure they encourage them that do them the judgment of god will be upon the sodomites will be upon the homosexuals will be upon the lesbians will be upon all sinners that means then, as we're looking at the word of God, it's telling us that we ought to beware. See that these things are going to be so. That the judgment of God is going to come. How we ought to take care of our lives and look up to the Lord and say, Lord, I know your word is true. And I know you are not going to deny yourself. And I know you are not going to slow down or soften. And you are not going to change your standard. Therefore, we need to come to the Lord and say, Lord, we examine our lives. And whatever is wrong, we want to put it right in Second Peter chapter 3. Second Peter chapter 3 in verse 7 but the heavens and the earth which are now by the same word are kept in store reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men in verse 11 seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness looking for and hasting unto the day on the, to the coming of the day of god wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat nevertheless we according to his promise look for new heavens and a new earth wherein dwelleth righteousness wherefore beloved seeing that ye look for such things be diligent don't be careless be prayerful be diligent be zealous about it be fervent about it think of your eternity be diligent that ye may be found in him in peace without spot and blameless let me remind you once again that without holiness no man no preacher no prophet no deliverance minister no deeper life member without holiness no one shall see the lord prepare to meet the lord your god i've shown it to you very plainly if the sword of judgment comes upon anyone and takes you away if anybody perishes your blood is no more on me I've told you there are false prophets according to the word of God. Flee from them. Avoid them. Think of your soul. Be diligent that you may be found in him without spot. Holy and blameless. Rise up and let us pray. There's nothing you are running home for. Set your life with the Lord before you go. You're in the presence of God. We're talking of something of eternal value. Where will you spend it? And it ought to be your concern. Are you a friend of false prophets? Are you a messenger of false prophets? Are you the one distributing the materials of false prophets to help them deceive other people? Are you on the prayer list of false prophets? Are you financing false prophets? What do you want to spend eternity? You're playing with your eternal soul. Come out from among them and be you separate, says the Lord. Then will I receive you, and you shall be my sons and my daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you have learned, and avoid them, avoid them, avoid them. Flee from them, run away from them. Are you born again? And are you still keeping that salvation? Are you guarding yourself, protecting yourself? From the deception of false prophets? Or are you turning a deaf ear to the warning of the word of God? Think of your eternity and think of your never dying soul. And remember that God requires righteousness. You need to exalt righteousness more than healing, more than deliverance, 
more than prosperity, more than having children for the barren, more than all the things that these people are talking about. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. Seek the Lord. For the sake of your own soul, prepare for eternity. Prepare for the coming of the Lord. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his own soul? What shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Are you helping other people to know the seriousness? Are following after false prophets? Are you keeping quiet? You see souls being deceived, you are silent. You see many being led astray and you are silent. You see many people backsliding, falling away from their steadfastness, you are silent. If their souls are precious to you, you'll speak out. So you can rescue them from perishing. Think about your soul. Prepare to meet the Lord your God. And think about others who are being deceived. Snatch them from the hands of the false prophets.